Okay, um, welcome, thank you for coming. Um, this presentation will be about the importance of reading, um, not just, but in more importantly, reading for pleasure, um, reading narratives, reading a range of stories, and how that impacts children as a person, but also academically as well. Um, the three main things that we're going to be looking at is, first of all, like I said, the reading for pleasure and the value of that. Also, how rugby school is starting to approach reading within the classroom and how you see that from home as well. And also how to approach reluctant readers. Um, I think that's something that most parents can relate to at some point. Their children might not want, always want to read. Um, so we'll be covering that as well. Um, first of all, the whole person, obviously being rugby school's um, mantra, but also reading has a bigger impact on the whole person than I think sometimes it's given credit for. Um, it impacts all of these things like mood and relaxation, um, bringing people together. Children in the library sessions now were talking to each other about what books they'd like to read and it's starting to give them a new avenue to share experiences with. Um, the one that I like the most and that parents so far have liked the most is that it decreases stress levels 600% more than playing video games. So if your child is stressed, if they've had a busy week and they say they just want to chill out and play Minecraft for two hours, it's not as good as reading. Um, so if you can tell them that, then they'll love that. <laughs> um, also imagination and vocabulary, as well as being an academic thing, being able to talk about things and be enthusiastic and it's, it all comes into everything as well. Um, things like happiness and long-term success. There's increasing research to suggest that reading more also translates into lifelong um, success academically, in business, professionally, um, confidence-wise. There's lots of long-term, lifelong benefits to reading for pleasure as well. And also one that's often overlooked is the emotional development, particularly when children haven't been seeing their friends quite as much as they normally would. When they read about a character going through a difficult situation, they empathise with that character. They learn how that character feels, how they might feel. Um, and that's a really important thing for children to go through lots of different situations. Um, and through reading, they can go through lots of different emotional situations. Um, so I think being able to understand other characters' feelings, and maybe their friends might feel the same thing. And it's just good for them to socially develop through books as well. Academically, obviously, reading is always said that reading is very, very important. Um, but it's not always suggested that reading for pleasure and reading stories is the most important thing. Um, but actually, reading for pleasure and reading stories and narratives has a massive impact on a child's academic progress. Not just reading academic literature or being able to read a test paper, but all the extra knowledge that comes with reading for pleasure translates into academic progress very strongly. Um, so all of these quotes that are uh, snipped out in white, these are from the UK government's National Curriculum Reading Review from last year. Um, and these have obviously come out after COVID started. So some of these are taking COVID into account and the periods of isolation and the different problems that children have had to deal with in the last couple of years. Um, so the first one, pupils who read are overwhelmingly more, more likely to succeed in school um, and then follow that up into later life as well. Um, and this is all based on reading for pleasure and reading stories. This is what this, um, the study was about. And the next one, again, if you read basically says if you read more, you're more likely to be above your age-related reading score. Um, the higher that reading score is, for example, the GCSE PE paper had a reading age of 16 and a half, and the English paper had a reading age of 14 and a half. Um, so the reading age and being competent and being ahead of age-related expectations can translate into every subject that possibly you don't always think about. Um, and again, this came from the the UK government review last year. Um, this is, again is another interesting one. Um, the blue line and the green line represent children who read for fun and read novels and read stories. And the red line is children who are very capable readers but don't read for pleasure and don't read stories. Um, and the academic performance of those children who read novels and stories every day, as opposed to children who are able to read articles and different things every day. Um, the children who read novels, stories and read for fun outperformed those children who read in different ways every day. The children who can read stories and novels and enjoy reading, enjoy reading a wide range of genres, those children 
outperformed those children who didn't do that. Despite reading every day, the importance of reading a wide range of material is evident. So these are a couple of quotes that came from the US recently. Um, from the majority of young people, enthusiastic and habitual reading is the single most predictive personal habit um, to achieve the life that they want. Um, there's a lot of role model readers at the moment, Elon Musk is a famous businessman. It's really well known how much he reads. Sometimes it's said that he reads two books a day. Some people say he reads, it possibly isn't like that every day. But the fact that he's a voracious reader and he reads all the time, he's said that's a key indicator for his success. Um, so again, it links back into a UK study that said lifelong success is impacted by reading and reading for pleasure. Um, as an academic point, test-based, um, children who read more words per day, so 3,000 words per day, would likely to be in the top 2% of the attaining children, and the children who read 20 words, so the children who read the least, are likely to be in the bottom 2%. Um, so again, it's just, there's so many different statistics and things to say that reading for pleasure in particular is vastly important. So student A is reading regularly, reading 20 minutes every day. Um, and during the minute challenge that we've just, we just did, the average child at rugby school read for 20 minutes a day for that, for that period. So it showed that it is possible if the situation is correct, if the motivation is there. 20 minutes a day, although it's not going to happen every day, it is an achievable aim to go for. Um, so 20 minutes a day translates to about 1.8 million words per year. Um, and then on average, those pupils are likely to be in the top 10%, so 90% better than peers when it comes to exam results. Bring that down to student C, who reads for about a minute a day, not an engaged reader. Um, they hear almost 1.8 million words less per year, um, which when you're thinking about language exposure and learning a new language, exposure to vocabulary and words and Exploring that vocabulary is hugely important. Um, and then obviously their test results come down accordingly. So thinking about this and deciding to do something about it at rugby school, we approached it in these five ways, um, which we discussed in the uh, World Schools online um, reading blog. So first of all, we gave pupils a voice. We sent out a Google form asking pupils whether they wanted to read, whether they thought they had enough time to read, whether the library was organized in the right way, whether we had the books that they wanted to read. Um, and largely their responses to reading as a, as a concept were very positive. They wanted to read, but they didn't really feel like they had enough time. They didn't really feel like the choice was correct. And the library was a bit confusing for them to find a book that they wanted to read. Um, so based on their suggestions from the Google form, we bought the books that they wanted us to buy. Um, so they could see the impact of, we've asked you a question, they've said, buy this, and then we've said, here it is, you can read it now. Um, which for them was great because they knew that we were listening to them and we bought what they suggested. Um, they said they wanted more time to read in school. I know that we have a very long school day, 10 and a half hours, end to end. And when they get back home, it's sometimes it's music lessons or they go to Planet Football or they go off and do something else. So after being at school for 10 hours and having something else and getting to bed or getting home at eight o'clock, they don't always want to read. Um, so we built a reading slot into the school timetable. So every day they read for a minimum of 10 minutes and they also have their 40 minute library session. So every week at school, they're reading for 80 minutes as a, of a minimum within the school day, just to, for us to show them that we think it's important. And they asked us for that. And now they've got that time to read with an adult in the room, they can take their time to understand their text. Um, as I said, choices, we bought the books they wanted, so they've got more of a, a, an ownership of the library. Um, discussion, we discuss their reading with them once a week in the library. So whatever book they're reading, they come into the library, the English teacher will be the one to sit down and say, how's reading gone this week? Have you enjoyed it? Have you understood it? Any challenges? Are you finding time to read at home? Um, and trying to get just a, an open discussion, an open talking about reading and them being honest and suggesting things and trying to make it work because um, it's quite a difficult thing to fit into the week. Um, and motivation, things like the minute challenge. Um, 
that was hugely successful. We didn't quite get to a million minutes, um, but on average, the pupils read four times more than they normally would do. And they read twice the double, double the perfect reading amount for that month. Um, so with a bit of support and some tries and some encouragement, the general response was fantastic. Um, and that can also be something that we can think about later on when we think about engaging reluctant readers too. Um, the choice aspect as well, reading not just the same type of books all the time, but part of that reading discussion in class will be, you've read 25 Diary of Your Wimpy Kid books, let's try something else now. You've read all of this series, let's try a different genre. You only read comedy, let's try a crime novel or a mystery novel and trying to get them to read different styles, to understand different problems, um, and trying to just broaden their minds slightly with, with what they're reading, which will also feed into the words that they understand, the words that they start to, to pick up as well. So to give you a break from, from me, this is a video that um, we've used on social media recently, but this is a, an example of kind of life in our school library during a library session. Hi, this is our prep library, which is full of wonderful books. We have books for all levels of readers in many different genres. Fantasy, scary, and action. So there really is something for all students, whether they're exploring new books or developing their reading skills or just sitting quietly and reading for a while. We see them start to love reading for pleasure. The boundless world of books is one of life's greatest gifts. So they were the library sessions that each child has once per week with their English teachers. And also we have Mrs. White, who's a full-time librarian, and she'll also be in those sessions with them, um, as well as sometimes a teaching assistant as well. Let's watch it again. Um, one of the main changes for this year is that we've brought in the Accelerated Reader and the Star Reader program um, for the prep school. So it started in year three and it goes all the way through to year eight. Um, the programs are designed to bring classroom attainment and reading for pleasure together um, so the children can see the impact one has on the other um, and it's a discussion tool and it's used to um, drive progress and to use the monitoring tool as well to make sure that we understand that they understand what they're reading um, at home so your child will at the moment or very shortly if they haven't got one already they should all have an accelerated reader a book level or a, a book band Previously, they would have had an Oxford Reading Tree Band, but this is slightly different, and the colours are different, and, and they don't relate to each other. So this is a new system. Um, in school, they do what's called a star reading test, and that gives them a reading age and a, a ZPD level, which is a book level. That book level then corresponds to a colour book band. And all of our school books in the library now have been colour-coded according to the, the accelerated reader book bands. So when they go into the library now, they'll have a book band, they'll go into one of the genre 
um, displays in the library. They'll go up to crime books if they want to read a crime book, and they'll find a crime book in there that's the right level of challenge for them. Um, a lot of the time, pupils will go home or they'll pick a book that's much too hard and they won't want to read it, or they'll pick a book that's much too easy and they won't want to read it because it's too easy. Um, so this makes sure that the book they choose, they know it's going to be roughly the right level for them. Um, so it should be accessible, but it still should, should still have some, some challenge and some new vocabulary as well. Um, children are often given two colours to choose from. As part of the discussion, if they've, re if they've read, so for example, if a child is on sky blue and dark blue, they might have read a dark blue book that was quite challenging, but they persevered and they got through it, but then they need a bit of a break. So they say, oh, can I read a light blue this time? And the English say, yeah, of course you can, because you're making those choices yourself, and that's where we're going with this, that they can empower their own choices and then make good reading decisions. Um, then the accelerated reader side is the, is the quizzing on the books that they've read. So every time they read a book on the accelerated reader website, which you can access via the rugby school reading website, um, they can go on to the Accelerator Reader, they should all know their logins by now, they can log in and then they take a quiz on their book um, to see if they've understood the book or not. Now the quizzes aren't meant to be a test, they are purely there to check if they've understood the, the main aspects of the book. And if they've read it and they've understood it, they'll pass the quizzes. Um, it's not meant to trip you up, it's just to check if you have understood what you've read. Um, that can then inform our discussions in school. If they say that they, they love the book, they understood it, and then they get one out of 10 on the quiz, that tells us that maybe the understanding wasn't there and we need to slow down or do some reading with an adult maybe. Um, if it's a slightly lower level, they're on orange and they get 10 out of 10 two or three times, we can say, oh, let's try a light blue then because you're okay with the orange books. So it, the book band isn't a, you are this level, you will always be this level as sometimes it can be thought of. It's more of a, at the moment, this is the right level, but let's talk about it. Let's see how they go. Let's look at the quizzes. And um, it's very much pupil led rather than just being, this is your book band. Um, if there's a book in the library that's one level above that they really want to read, then of course they can have a go and see if they get on with it and see if they like it. And, and English teachers can support them with those choices. Um, as I said, they should all know how to log in at home. They can take the quizzes at home. Um, they get a chance to quiz in reading time during the day in their library sessions as well. Um, but we are really encouraging them whenever they finish a book to do the quiz before they move on to the next book. To so number one, make sure they finish the book all the way through, not just pick up a book, read a bit, put it back, pick up a book, read a bit, put it back, but to really ensure they understood the whole narrative. Um, so the bit that most parents so far have been um, interested in more than anything else has been the how to engage p children who necessarily don't find reading as natural as others. Children who might be really good readers but don't particularly want to for various reasons. Um, first of all, having a positive reading environment at home and at school has an incredibly big impact on whether a child will read and sustain that reading into later life. Um, in school, we've done lots of work at um, asking some of the teachers to record videos about their favorite book, maybe teachers who they think, they just think the English department read, they don't think the PE department read or the history department. Um, so we had uh, Mrs. Howell and Mr. Grinley talk about their favorite books and the PE department and lots of different teachers to show that lots of different teachers read and enjoy it for lots of different reasons. Um, and it's also really important at home if they can see you read as much as possible, if they see you as a reader, um, that does encourage them to also become a reader as well. Um, so yeah, at school we're really trying to promote teachers being reading role models for pupils. Um, and at home if you can do the same, that would be massively helpful too. When thinking about approaching a reluctant reader, it can be tricky. It's, sometimes it's, you feel like you just want to say, just go and read your book. Um, but it's often through discussion with them that you can find some sort of balance that leads to more reading happening. Um, so voice, in the same way that we approached engaging the reading culture at school, I think those five strands are a really good way to approach it at home as well. Um, so giving them a, a choice to read their books, it might be they want to read their AR book at school and they want to read something more relaxing at home, that's absolutely fine. Um, so allowing them to choose their books having that same discussion that we have in school about reading can be a really powerful thing as well. Um, 
particularly about times. Um, if they're tired when they get back from school and they're too tired to read and they've already read today, I, if that's a discussion that they don't read during the week and they'd rather read at the weekend, then again, that's a decision you can come to with your child. Um, sometimes parents are really busy after work and you haven't got time to sit down and read with them. Again, absolutely fine. Find some time at the weekend. Um, it might be that some children like to read all in one go for an hour and some children prefer to break it up. Um, it's all about having that conversation with, um, with the child. If you've talked about everything and they've chose their book and they still, again, aren't happy with reading at home or very resistant, sometimes a motivation, an incentive, a carrot to dangle in front of them to say, look, it needs to happen. I tried this with my four-year-old in the half-term holiday. He, um, he loved it for a while, but he wasn't keen on reading during the holiday. So we said, if, if you want to watch anything at all, you have to read beforehand. And then by the end of the week, he was saying, can we read now? <laughs> so sometimes, although long term, obviously the love of reading is why we want them to pick up a book. But at the start, sometimes they just need a, a little bit of pushing into it. And sometimes reward, you know, if you want to go on Minecraft, let's have 20 minutes of reading first. And then just trying to build that positive habit eventually. And eventually the incentive hopefully won't need to be there. Um, so the short term, it's a, it's a good choice. Um, and again, uh, choice of books genre, it could be that they're not reading the right book. Even though they've chosen it in the library, they might have discussed it with their teacher, they might still really not like it. And that's absolutely fine. They can come into school, they can change their book before school every day, they can change the book in the library, they can change the book with their English teacher. Mrs. White's always there to talk about their reading choices. Um, so if they are struggling to find something to read, um, you can ask them what type of TV shows they like to watch. They might, um, some of the year eights, for example, enjoyed watching Twilight. And I said, you know, that was a book. And they're like, no. I was like, do you want to read it? And they were like, yeah. So sometimes it's just they don't know that there's a book there that suits their tastes. Um, and again, on the Reb School website, there's a year group section. So for year five, um, there's a year five page. Easy to show you. Um, and on the year five page, which is on the left hand side, there's a try these section, which loads up a website. And that website has a list of contemporary modern classic books specifically aimed at year five pupils. Um, and there's also one for year six, if your child's quite an advanced reader, they like to try something different and challenge themselves. There's a year six page um, as well. And the accelerator reader link that they have to click on to get onto accelerator reader is also on there as well. Um, if your child's struggling to break down the language of a book, um, it's quite a big area. So we're going to run a workshop on this with Missy Donaldson in term three about just working through the phonics and the mechanics of reading. Um, but there are some tips on the website if you want to have a look about how to try and, if you're reading with your child and they're struggling, just to break the language down slightly. Um, if you're doing all of these things and they're using a dictionary or sometimes using an iPad or a tablet just to check what a word means is a quick, easy way to find, to break that vocabulary down. Um, Google Images can sometimes be a really good tool for just checking a concept or a setting they've never seen before. Um, if they see something in a book, they're not sure what it looks like, they can Google that and they'll get a picture in their heads, which is sometimes easier to understand than um, searching through words. If you've tried all of these things and they're still not understanding the words, if they're stopping more than 10 times on one page, then the book is probably too challenging for them. And that comes back to that discussion. They can come back to the English teacher and say, this is just too hard for me. And then we can change the book choice. Um, yeah, are there any questions Ooh, perfect um, can Lara is also here because I realize I talk um, quite quickly <laughs> um, is there any can Lars here happy to translate anything if you'd like anything clarified as well um, okay that's great perfect thank you very much for coming and if you have any more questions um, you can always email me or um, come and find me after school. That's great. Thank you very much.